Hey everybody, and on today's vlog, we are playing Incubation by Snapsis Games. Let's hatch some dragons. The world has become a very different place in the last 12 months since the discovery of the century. High atop the Earth's tallest mountains, brave explorers found a cave containing nests with gigantic, colorful dragon eggs. Over the past year, hatching those eggs has become a big business with fortune to be made for a talented breeder. Hello, Sarah. What are we playing today? Today we are playing Incubation by Synapse Games, or Synapses Games, excuse me. Um, it is a dice rolling sort of resource management kind of game, I would guess, yeah. is what you would classify it as. I'd say that. So in this game, we are dragon breeders who are breeding and selling dragons, um, and we are attempting to collect different uh, dragon eggs and incubate them and then hatch them and then use those dragons to um, collect sort of um, objectives. So the way that it works is on your turn you're going to roll these two dice and they are going to give you some results. Let's pretend we got these results. Now I can take these from the supply so for example I could get one flame from the supply and one coin from the supply or I could use um, one reroll on my turn, uh, which I would have to do immediately after rolling. I'd have to decide if I want to keep one or both of these. I could reroll um, any dice that I want to once. So let's say that I don't want to keep this one. So I'll give this one a reroll. Ah, look at that. Well, I guess that's what I get anyway, because you only get the one reroll. So now you can use these die to collect resources, like I said, or you can use them to grab these dragon eggs that are available to us. So let's say that this one here, I'll take the fire. I'm gonna put that onto my little incubator. This is my incubator right here. This is where my my eggs where will be stored. Happens. Yep, this is where my eggs will be stored while they are being incubated. So that's what I did with this die here. With this one here, I could take a dollar or I could use any die except a treasure chest, which we'll talk about in a minute, to collect an egg. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one right here and I'm going to put it um, on my either of my incubator spots. Now, this one here needs three flames and two water to hatch. So I've got one flame. I'm gonna go ahead and put it here so that I can start working on that one there. Okay. Now, if I were to have rolled a treasure chest, this little, um, sort of spinner is going to move clockwise one space and then it will automatically populate these resources on the chest in that area. So this particular chest here would get a dollar, this one would get a, a water droplet, and this one would get a second fire. It got to start with a fire so it would get a second fire. If however I rolled two treasure chests on my turn, I could take all of the resources in any one treasure chest that I wanted. So right now with the start of the game, there's not a whole lot going on. There's only a few options, but as we play the game and more and more treasure accumulates on these chests, when a player rolls two chests, they can actually accumulate more than one item. So uh, we'll, we'll just say that I take this one and it goes here. Um, like I said, you have a reroll if you want, so you can reroll the dice if you want to, but whatever you um, decide to stick with, that's what you get. You um, resolve the die, and then if you don't have enough resources to hatch an egg, then it's the next player's turn. But if you do, let's pretend that I had one more flame here, and I had two water droplets as well. So I have everything that I need now to hatch this uh, dragon egg. After I roll and resolve my dice, I've got everything I need. I go ahead and hatch this dragon egg, and I now have a blue dragon sort of in my arsenal. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of all of the resources that were used up in hatching this egg. And then the next thing I'm going to do is take all of the treasure on any one of the blue dragons on the board. So if there was any treasure here, I could take that or if there's any treasure here, I can take that. This treasure chest is empty, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this water droplet here. And then I'm going to put that on my incubator as well. Now this dragon becomes, like I said, part of my arsenal, and I can use any dragons that I've completed to try to attempt these um, sort of objectives 
And if I meet an objective, let's pretend that I had another blue dragon, two red dragons, and five coins. If I meet the objective at the end of my turn, I can take the card and it will also be worth some points at the end of the game. The game ends when either all five of the objectives have been taken or when any two stacks of cards have been fully depleted. At that point, players add up all of the points that they got from objectives that they completed, dragons that they hatched, and um, coins that they have collected by way of the... The dice and the treasures. Results. So well, and yeah, die results. yeah, and then I guess it yeah if you well it's had a, any yeah but yeah you, you're right time. the die results because you get it from the you know the dice or the treasures from the die result. So that's how you play incubation. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and uh, get into it, and then we'll come back to you guys midway through the game and tell you how it's going. All right. So without further ado, toodles. Hello, Sarah. The in the you are in the wild incubations of dragons. How goes it? Uh, it goes well. I think we're a little shy of the halfway point at this point. The game ends when either all five of these have been picked up, and we've picked up two of them, or when two of those three piles are depleted. <laughs> so I think we're probably maybe a little shy of the halfway point at this point. Um, we've each collected and hatched quite a few dragons. Um, this is my little compadre. Well, that's mine, that's, and know, then that is Sarah's. Yeah. And um, I've been able to achieve this objective where I needed um, three of these red guys, and I, I had a wild, so I used him as my third, and then two of these greens. And so I was able to achieve this objective and it'll be worth five points at the end of the game. Um, and I'm on my way to, to doing a few other ones as well. You've gotten to achieve something. Yeah, I got to achieve the like two orange dragons and two green dragons and having five coins uh, got me five points towards the end of the game and then just getting a nice little selection of dragons. I haven't had any broken eggs yet. I have. It was heartbreaking. Look at this. So sad. So sad. So you don't know exactly what dragons are going to hatch sometimes. You have an idea of the chances of what you might get. So this one here, they said it could either be a red dragon or a green dragon, uh, but you don't actually know until you fulfill the requirements and the egg hatches. So I worked diligently to hatch this little beautiful egg. But alas, it cracked. There was nothing inside. Sad. So um, that was sad. Um, now I will still get the points for hatching this egg at the end of the game. So it's still worth some points, but unfortunately it's not a dragon that I could use for any of the sort of set collection that we're working on. What do you think so far, Nick? I'm enjoying it. Uh, the game I thought was gonna be a lot simpler and I didn't think that was actually gonna be fun. But once we got into it, it was it was at a, a higher complexity than expected. I think it's still pretty simple, though. Yeah. On most turns, you're rolling dice and resolving those dice, yeah. and that's it. Um, on some I think turns, your choices, though, kind of like add a little bit more to it that I thought wasn't going to be there. Yeah. Um, Not saying it's anything like complex. Yeah, I just it's think not very complicated. It's just a. Uh, I thought it was going to be really, really simple. The like, box time says 30 minutes. Now, it's a two to five player game. Maybe with a higher player count, it would take 30 minutes, but I don't think that that's an accurate box time for a two player game. And even though this is um, still a bit of a learning game for us, we've played before, but not um, a lot. So even though it's still kind of an, a learning game for us, I don't think that that's adding a lot of time to the experience. Uh, and I think that the box time is probably inaccurate for a two player game. Um, Interesting. I, I think it's going to take longer than 30 minutes for us to complete this. Um, okay. That being said, there are some neat things we uh, went at the start of the game. This right here wasn't as full as it is now. Um, so this dial right here moves and as it moves, it dictates which sort of resources get populated to these treasure, treasure chests. And then when players roll the double treasure result, they get to collect 
all of the treasure in any one chest on the board. Additionally, when they complete a, a hatchling, um, they get to take the treasure from one of those matching hatchlings. So if I just completed this, I could take this or this, and um, I would get some extra goodies for doing that. So this is an interesting part of the game. Players don't really have a ton of control over it. You can stop when you're... Um, when your die results are treasures if you want to um but you're kind of maybe helping out your opponent if you do that because the treasure gets seeded to the board and you might not be the one who actually gets to pick it up so um typically um unless you roll a double treasure result you're potentially helping out your opponent and um that's an interesting part of the game we don't seem to have like a ton of control over it, just kind of there, and it sort of supplements um, like our turns, but it's it's not something that we can like willfully interact with unless we're choosing to to keep the treasure results we roll. Um, but like I said, there's not a lot of reward um, to that because maybe you seed the the treasure chest and then your opponents get it. The only way that you get to actually get treasure with the dice that you roll is if you roll both of them as treasure results. If you only roll one of them as treasure results, you're going to actually add treasure out here. And then, like I said, maybe your opponent ends up getting it and you don't. So that's an interesting part of the game. Another interesting part of the game is with the eggs that are available to pick up, um, you have kind of an idea of what they might be. Now, it's either going to be that particular um what are these dragons right it's either yeah. going to be that particular dragon or it's going to be the broken egg um now one way or the other you're going to get to use it towards your set collection if it's not a broken egg but sometimes like like in this game here there are not a lot of um objective cards that had the blue dragons on them yeah there was only one one objective card had the blue dragons and it seems like we've had a lot of blue dragon choices so it's been interesting because on your turn you can use a die f for its resource right so like i could mm -hmm. use this to get a fire yeah. or i could use it to pick up a card well knowing that the blue dragons aren't going to help us meet these objectives um means that a couple of times i've sort of held off on picking up another card even though i've had spot for it like right now i don't have any dragons in my incubator and i've got some resources here so i should probably be you know incubating some eggs and trying to get them but because they're dragons i know won't help with the end of uh, end of game objectives i'm kind of um avoiding them even though i would get the points for them um so yeah I think there's some interesting things going on here. I think it's really cute. Um, it looks really fantastic. And everything seems to be working just fine, so. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, well, we're going to get back into it and get into who is the, the wrangler of the incubation for dragons. All right, toodles. Hello, midwife of all the dragons. <laughs> you are the trusted midwife while I am like that midwife that you get the last apprentice. second you're like, <laughs> the apprentice, apprentice. ouch yeah. <laughs> just kick me down the stairs why don't you so my score was like 86 yeah mine was like 72 um what did you think of the game it was uh it was good i i enjoyed it um thanks for I, <laughs> um i think it was a good little filler type game it's light enough to kind of get your get you where you need to go when you want that game and fix and it's simple you roll dice you react but it's it's simple but at the same time makes it feel like um there's more to do and there's more to pay attention to because towards the end of the game there was a race for a uh, race for money to get that last objective and i got it but it didn't really help me win so, uh, and there was a point in the game I was, uh, trying to race to getting more dragons because I thought you would get the money first. But then when I found out that, like, my rolls were just getting me, like, more money, I was like, oh, maybe I could be it and end the game. 
Um, which you did I, end up doing, did, right? I, I yeah. did. I, I ended the game, but then I ended... I ended it and found out I was the loser. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't make the dragon babies fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, though, we were both... Like, there was only one objective yeah. left. And it was and... very hard to get to go after dragons because it was so close to the game that you were... You know, I was trying to reroll for more coins when I could have maybe gone after the dragons. Um, or the... Uh, yeah, more dragons, but yeah. So... So yeah, it was a good one. What did you think? Um, I think that it was a very cute game. I think that everything worked. Um, maybe with more plays, we would find something that doesn't quite work. But with the experience that I've had with it so far, like there's nothing broken or um, there's nothing you're like, oh, I wish it was like this, not like that. There's nothing like that. Everything works. It's smooth. The gameplay is easy to pick up on. Um, but it's engaging and it's fun. I think if you like dice games, if you like um, cutesy art, um, and if you like Probably light, like an easy, yeah. sort of filler-esque games that are a little bit on the heavier side, um, this I would say this is probably about a 40-minute filler. Um, if you like anything like that, I would definitely check this one out because it's um, it looks great. All of the components are a good quality. It, the play was fun and interesting. Um, and it was just, it was very cute. Yeah. It was it a very was. cute experience yeah. and uh, everything for the most part worked. We didn't run into any major issues. And I know that doesn't seem like that much of a compliment. Like everything worked. There wasn't anything broken. I know that that's sort of the like lowest expectations, right? Like everything should work. They shouldn't publish a game where there are like things that are broken or that don't work or that don't, you know, like sort of smoothly work together kind of thing. But the thing is, we've played a lot of games where we've come away from the experience saying, man, I wish they would have just play tested this one area a little bit more. Or I wish that this was a little bit different. Or I wish yeah. that this was like tweaked a little better. And in this one, there wasn't anything like that. Everything worked. Everything flowed. Everything meshed well. And like I said, I know that doesn't really feel like a compliment, and maybe it shouldn't be, but I think that it is. Yeah, because I know some people start homebrewing rules and games, and yeah. they're like, well, this really gets me off put about the game, so I do this or this. Or like, for example, your mom doesn't like the thief in Catan, and so she wants to take it out, but she doesn't really realize that it's that, there's that there's a the game. yeah there's a purpose to yeah. not having like because you know if the lead. <laughs> lead character or the, uh, the person in first place has all the cards and they don't need to trade anymore and they don't need to worry about the robber taking all their cards away then you know the game is it just broke and that person can just you know wait until they win the game but uh but yeah really enjoyed this one and we hope you all really enjoyed this vlog of incubation by synapses games this is not one of the games that we are giving away during our 12, 12 days giveaway, but we are currently running a giveaway on our channel. Um, Nick will link the video at the end in the description will, below. Yeah. Um, check it out. We're running it from December 25th, 2020 through January 6th, 2021. Um, it is completely free to enter. International participants are welcome. We are giving away a dozen games plus tons of promos. So Nick will link the video in the description below. Um, check that out to see if you can win. All right. Well, until next time, we hope you all enjoyed this vlog and we'll see you next time. Toodles.